In today's quick video, let's talk about berberine. Let's dive in. Berberine is a constituent that's found in a number of plants, things like barberry, Oregon grape, and even golden seal. And the constituent is often taken from the root, the rhizome, or even the stem of these plants. Berberine is generally used orally, taken in dosages of up to about one and a half grams, and can be used, or has been studied, I should say, in periods for up to six months. I generally will have clients cycle on and off of this one. Have to start this one off by saying berberine has many, many uses, but I'm just gonna cover kind of the top top ones what I use it for clinically. The first is for its anti-diabetic effects. Now, berberine has been shown to lower blood glucose levels in a couple of different ways. For one, it has the ability to increase the receptor expression of insulin, so giving more sites of insulin to bind to. And it can also help the skeletal muscle uptake glucose, thus taking the amount of glucose in circulation down a level, thus helping to reduce the amount of glucose floating around in circulation. Berberine can also help to reduce the amount of glucose being produced by by the liver or just kind of decreasing gluconeogenesis. And some newer research, more so in animal models, also shows that berberine can actually help to increase GLP-1. Now you've probably heard of GLP-1 or, glucagon, or glucagon-like peptide in things like Ozempic and other GLP or semiglutide type drugs that are often used not only for diabetes, but now are more popular for things like weight loss. And because of this, people often find that when taking a berberine supplement, depending on the dosage, that their appetite might be decreased and therefore they actually start to see some weight loss as well. Now, before you go running for berberine to replace your Ozempic, just hold your horses a minute because it does come with some side effects. Berberine is also very antimicrobial and it's often used in a number of anti-parasite or antimicrobial protocols, especially with things like functional medicine practitioners. It can often kill off both good and bad bacteria in some cases, so you wanna be really careful with using this one. Berberine has been shown to be not only antibacterial, but also antifungal as well. Because of that antimicrobial effect, you often see it being used in things like the treatment of SIBO or small intestinal bowel overgrowth or other things where you're trying to kill off some bad bacteria. Berberine has also been shown to help to lower cholesterol because it can actually block the absorption of cholesterol as well. So it's often used when you have some high lipids or high cholesterol levels as well. Berberine is also anti-inflammatory and has actually been shown to reduce levels of CRP. CRP is often a marker of inflammation or systemic inflammation in the body that we can actually measure. And some of the early research or preliminary research also shows that it is a selective COX-2 inhibitor, which is another inflammatory pathway. And of course, berberine is also an antioxidant, so it can help to scavenge free radicals and prevent oxygen oxidative stress. Now, how do I use berberine? Well, I actually use this one in a couple of different ways. Number one, I tend to use this in women who are suffering from PCOS. And I also use it in cases where people are struggling either with elevated glucose or even insulin resistance, and also to help to lower their cholesterol. Now, again, berberine definitely has other uses, and I also will sometimes use it as a antimicrobial. Now, dosages are going to vary depending on how you're using it. Generally, when I'm looking to help with either cholesterol or things like uh, insulin sensitivity or lowering blood glucose, I tend to do 500 milligrams three times a day. Now, this is not without side effect. Berberine can cause things like nausea, diarrhea, or upset stomach, gas and bloating. So you wanna take care in adding berberine to your routine. Make sure you're talking with your doctor. And there is one hard contraindication with the medication cyclosporine. So again, as I always recommend, please, please, please make sure that you're talking with your practitioner about any potential interactions and making sure that this is a good choice for you. All right, I hope that you found this video helpful and I hope that you learned something. And if you did and you want more, then you might wanna check out this video. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.